Could this be the ultimate productivity device? This is the $1,500 Surface Duo 2 from Microsoft, who've made a foldable device they claim is so good, you may want to throw all your other devices away. In this video, we're gonna show you what happened when we tried to get some real work done on the Surface Duo 2. Not just, ooh, isn't it pretty, and hasn't it got a great camera, but like actual work that we do every day. So you can see what it's like and decide if you should buy one. Working on the go is just a part of everyday life, and we get so much done on our mobiles with these tiny little screens. We do calls, emails, even video conferences, but, when we want to focus and get some real work done, we sit at our desks, we have multiple monitors and apps running side by side. This is when we really make things happen. So surely, if we could bring multiple screens and apps running side by side on your mobile, that would be the dream, right? First off, let's just talk about the speeds that this thing gets, because this is a new 5G device. So if I just have a quick look on here, and I'm gonna run a quick speed test for us. Now, here in the city of Leeds, we get some amazing 5G throughput. All right, so it's ramping up 16, 25, 34 meg, 73 meg a second. Outlook is a lovely experience with my inbox over here on the left and then my message previews over here on the right-hand side. This way, it's really easy to breeze through my messages and it's just like I'm on the desktop version, to be honest. When I jump into the calendar, I get a really nice view of my entire week at a glance, thanks to both screens being used. And I'm able to quickly add a booking here, and then I can also drag and drop files into this event if I want to, and that makes this a really nice touch. Teams is a fantastic experience, whether I'm doing chats or if I'm opening up files in one of the teams I'm a part of, it's really easy. Holding meetings is also great, and thanks to the different ways that you can use the device, I can have sit-down meetings, stand-up meetings, or even meetings on the go. And this is what the audio sounds like for people on the other side of the call. Unfortunately, as you can see, using Teams this way round isn't a great experience for the other guy. Word is pretty good. You could potentially create a nice document on here while you're on the go, but I have to say that whilst the keyboard has got great haptic feedback, the Microsoft Swift key keyboard is a horrible experience. There's a subtle delay between the keystrokes, which means it's causing me to mistype things if I try to build up any speed. It's much easier and faster to type on other devices than on this one, and there doesn't seem to be any contextual autocorrect. So sometimes I just end up writing garbage. Now to be fair, you can swap the Swift key keyboard for a different one, but again, I kind of feel like I'm buying a premium device. It should kind of be all set up and ready to go. The YouTube app is not optimized for this device, and I consume a lot of content. Now, this is fine when you're watching it on a single screen, but this, this is horrible, especially when you compare it to some other dual screen devices which are out there. But the speakers are fantastic, so I could happily sit and watch it like this or with headphones if I'm traveling. This is great. LinkedIn looks great in single screen mode and it's really easy to create content. Although it does highlight again that some apps just aren't ready for this dual screen experience. And it reminds me that when you fold the Duo in half, it always prefers the right hand screen to be the active one. So I'm constantly double tapping to switch screens. When it comes to the camera, do you know what? I generally take photos at events or snap an expense receipt all of which works perfectly fine on the Duo. There's no delays or complexity, you just kind of snap and get on with it. Also, a big thing I do on my mobile is take screenshots to share content, which again is great, if not a little bit awkward because of the key combination. You have to kind of clutch it in this one hand and then press these two at the same time, and there we go. On calls, if I'm using headphones, then this is as good as anything else. But if I wanna hold it like a phone, it's just a bit too heavy to be comfortable. And this massive camera notch on the back, which is great for adding three new cameras, but it also means that the device can no longer fold in half properly, which makes it just a little bit too uncomfortable to hold for any long periods of time. But is this really the ultimate productivity device? For me, it's gotta be a no. There's too many niggles and compromises, too many apps that aren't quite ready for this split screen experience. Now, if I wanna be in the Microsoft ecosystem, then I would much rather have a Surface Go 2 with a SIM card. I'm always on, I've got a full version of Windows on the go, and I've also got a keyboard and a trackpad, which means that all of those compromised experiences of the awkward keyboard and the gap in the middle of the screen, that's all gone. And you know what, at just 10 inches, it really isn't that much bigger than the Surface Duo anyway. 
Or if you love Android and you want to get a portable tablet, then the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7s. They're absolutely perfect. They also come with a pen and a full keyboard. Both of those options are roughly half the price of a Surface Duo 2. Now, I am fully team Microsoft, so genuinely, I wanted to love this thing, but it just doesn't quite cut it. So for me, I'm gonna be going for that Surface Go with a SIM card. If you want to stay in the foldable space and you're at this premium price point, and that's quite cool for you, I'd seriously be taking a look at that Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. 